Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's mentoring hour. Uh, today, Pastor Selena will be today Pastor Selena will be sharing with us on the important topic of water baptism. After that, we will open up the time for the students, and you can uh, share your doubts and your questions. The faculty and Pastor Selena are here, and they can help you with your questions. Uh, so let's begin with a word of prayer. Um, I request one of the students to open with a word of prayer, please. Yes, Lord. Yes, sorry for the disturbance. Yes, if someone could please um, lead us in a word of prayer, and then um, Pastor Selena will share with us. Could we have any one of the students? Um, if you could yeah, just unmute. Father, yes. please go ahead. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful moment that you have given us. Thank you for gathering us together in the name of the Lord. As we hear what you have for us today, would you open our hearts and our minds that we may receive from you? We thank you and we bless you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, Pastor Selena. Um, yes, if you could share with us. Um, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, mentoring hour. Um, as Pastor Deepika uh, has mentioned, that uh, we'll be the topic for today's uh, mentoring hour is uh, uh, water baptism. Uh, we're having some pro issues with uh, uh, presenting the um, the slides, so we'll just uh, they're working on it, and then we'll have it on once it's once it's ready. But we'll just move ahead with um, our uh, topic for today. Uh, the word uh, baptize or uh, baptizing comes from the Greek word uh, baptizo, which means uh, to dip, uh, to immerse, to submerge, to overwhelm, uh, to cleanse by submerging. So uh, baptism, which is an act of baptizing, uh, comes from the Greek word baptisma, meaning uh, immersion or submersion. So it's clear from... Uh, uh, both the meaning of the, these words, that uh, uh, you know, the practice of baptism in the New Testament is when a person is uh, baptized in water, the, the person is completely uh, immersed or the person is submerged in water, and it's not sprinkling of water on a person, but a full immersion of the person in water. In the New Testament, the first who came um, announcing about water baptism and baptizing people was John the Baptist. Uh, and so we'll just look at uh, six important uh, truths concerning water baptism. The first important truth concerning water baptism is that it is a sign of uh, repentance. Um, the baptism of uh, uh, John, that John preached and uh, taught and what he baptized was a baptism of repentance uh, and this means that those who repented you know of um, their uh, sinful ways their uh, you know their sinful thought life and they want to align themselves to the uh, will of god and come into alignment with the obedience of god um, they were then baptized by uh, john the baptist but when Jesus came and began his ministry and he was teaching, uh, this message of re repentance was accompanied by an invitation into the kingdom of God, uh, and that is by believing the good news of the kingdom. And uh, we read in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, uh, when Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Okay, so that is Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. So Jesus is saying that he who believes and is baptized will be 
saved. So repentance and believing in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and salvation, you know, uh, that he provides, that Jesus provides for us is the prerequisite for baptism. So all those who want to be baptized in water, what is the prerequisite? that they um, they repent of their sins, they believe in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins and their uh, salvation. Now, did Jesus uh, partake in water baptism? Yes, no, did Jesus partake in water baptism? Any answers? Yes, yes, okay. yes thank you. Uh, so why did Jesus, uh, who had no sin and nothing to repent of, why did he choose to be baptized by uh, John? Okay, uh, one of the reasons uh, we read is in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. But I'll just like to focus on verse 15, where Jesus answers and tells John the Baptist, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then Jesus allowed John the Baptist to baptize him. So what Jesus was saying is, you know, um, telling John is that, um, you know, uh, of course, when John looks at Jesus, he, uh, you know, even before Jesus was baptized and God tells him that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon him. And that is how he is going to recognize who the Messiah is and who the Lamb of God is and that he has to reveal this to the Israelites even before that when when John the Baptist looks at um, at Jesus he immediately recognizes him as the Messiah and he's not willing to baptize him but Jesus tells him you know permit it to be so for now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness so what did Jesus mean when he said that it is to fulfill all righteousness Jesus was basically saying that you know let's do it because this is what is right in the eyes of the father okay uh, let's do all that the father wants to be done at this moment so fulfilling all righteousness means jesus was saying let us do what is right in the eyes of the father and let us do all that the father wants to be done at this moment so there is something that is much bigger in what about water baptism than we really think that you know it is somebody who is repenting of their sins confessing their sins and telling the community hey that i'm a believer and accepted jesus christ so there's something bigger in water baptism than just a repentance from sin it was something that even the sinless lamb of god it was something that even the sinless son of god uh, desired to step into and what was that it was an expression of the will of god being released on earth it was an expression of doing the will of the father here on earth okay the second um uh, important uh, truth concerning water baptism is that uh, you know, it is to fulfill all righteousness and doing the will of God. Like Jesus, you know, when a person is baptized in water, they're basically fulfilling all the righteousness that, you know, uh, uh, righteousness of God. They are doing what is right in the eyes of the Father. They're doing the will of God. They're saying yes to the will of God to be done in their life and for the kingdom of God to be released on the earth through them. So that is the greater significance uh, of uh, water baptism, that is to fulfill all righteousness and doing the will of God. The third important truth concerning water baptism is that it is a testimony that, you know, um, uh, that we are a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you read in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, it's a very familiar scripture passage where, or uh, scripture verses, and um, where um, Jesus is, um, you know, uh, giving us the great commission. And uh, Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we see that, you know, he also tells them, uh, you know, uh, uh, tells them, teaching them to observe all of these things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So when we are partaking in water baptism, we are basically testifying to all that we have chosen uh, to become, that we have chosen to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, being a disciple of Jesus Christ means that we are embarking on a journey 
to learn, to be taught, to be trained, um, so that we can become more and more like our master, who is Christ Jesus, our Lord, to become more and more like him. The fourth truth concerning uh, water baptism is that it's a testimony of our faith in Jesus Christ. We read in Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, it says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven heaven. So what a baptism is a public confession of our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior of our lives. It is an acknowledgement, a testimony, and um, a, a declaration before others that we believe in Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and that we have received the free gift of salvation. The fifth truth concerning water baptism is that we are identifying with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we are baptized, uh, Jesus said in the Great Commission, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when we look in, in the, uh, read the book of Acts, we see that, you know, when people were baptized, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when we are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, we are publicly identifying ourselves with our Lord and Savior, who is Jesus Christ. And we are declaring that he is Lord over over our um, lives. And those who are baptizing uh, the person, when they baptize them, they baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and, uh, uh, and the Holy Spirit. That means they are baptizing them in the authority of uh, Jesus Christ. They are doing it on his behalf and as his representative. The fifth um, uh, truth concerning water baptism is that it is identifying with the name um, of the Lord. Sorry, the sixth one is uh, that we are, uh, you know, proclaiming our identification uh, with Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, instituted these two practices in the church. One is water baptism and the other is the Lord's table. And both are powerful ways to proclaim what Jesus Christ accomplished for us through his death and his resurrection. So water baptism is a symbolic expression and a powerful proclamation of what has already taken place uh, in us spiritually. So here is what Apostle Paul states, this um, very important scripture passage in Romans chapter 3, uh, where he talks about our identification uh, and our spiritual identification in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, Apostle Paul states that, or do you not know that as many of us uh, were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through the baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. And Paul writing to the church of Colossae in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 states, buried with him in baptism, in which also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. So here, the scripture passages says that when we are born again, we become spiritually one with Christ, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. But we also like these scripture passages uh, state, we also identify with Christ's death, that is his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his seating at the right hand of God the Father. So we'll just quickly look at um, how we identify you know, um, with uh, Jesus Christ, uh, you know, with his death, his burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating, um, you know, when we uh, are water baptized, and how is it a, pro a powerful proclamation of our identity with uh, Jesus? So how do we identify with Christ's death, that is with Christ's crucifixion? When Christ died, we also died with him. So the old nature, the old uh, sinful man was crucified with him. We read this in Romans chapter 6, verse 6. We no longer have an old sinful nature inside us, but now we are partakers of the uh, divine nature and the power of sin over our lives is broken and we are no longer slaves of 
sin that we read in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 14. So how do we identify spiritually with his burial? When Christ was buried, you know, we were also buried. That means that we are separated from our old life. The old has gone, the new has come. So when a person is dead, they're basically separated from their old life. And um, uh, uh, we are now a new creation. The old has, uh, or the old sinful nature or the old um, uh, carnal nature has no more claim over us or any part in us, as we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Now, how do we identify spiritually with Christ's resurrection? When Christ was resurrected, we were raised up with him. We read this in Ephesians chapter 2. This means that we are brought from death to to life and we are brought out from the power of Satan into God and now we walk in a new life in this in the kingdom of God and we have a new way of living and the powers of darkness have no longer any hold over us amen so how do we identify uh, spiritually with Christ's ascension? When Christ ascended, we ascended with him. Again, it's mentioned in Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, and we are therefore seated, uh, you know, we ascended with him. There, uh, therefore, you know, we set our affections on not on earthly things. We set our affections on things above. And... Um, we live a life that is uh, uh, renewed in the mind where we take on the thoughts and the ways of God and we uh, don't see things on uh, 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 on the earth with our uh, carnal or with our earthly uh, eyes but we look at everything from spiritual eyes with uh, from the uh, from heaven's perspective because our life is now hidden with Christ uh, in God and the last one is how do we identify um, spiritually uh, in his seating is when Christ was seated on the on on the right hand of God the Father. You know we are also made to sit together with Him. That is spiritually. Uh, we read this again in Ephesians chapter two. So what does that mean? We are seated in a place of authority and dominion uh, in Christ. And oh, we are, uh, you know, we have authority over every demonic forces and all of uh, Satan and his demonic forces, this host are underneath our uh, feet. So water baptism is a symbolic expression of all this. Lastly, just like to mention that when a person is baptized in water, they are making a proclamation to the visible realm uh, and to the invisible uh, realm uh, that they have, you know, spiritually identified with Jesus in his death, his burial, his resurrection, um, his uh, ascension, his uh, seating. And, um, you know, and it is it's a symbolic action. It is very, very powerful. And at the moment that, you know, we are baptized or a person is baptized, they can ex uh, expect or experience the full, um, you know, benefits of the uh, cross, uh, the, the power of the cross uh, to be administered in and through their lives through the work of the Holy um, Spirit. So uh, that is very briefly about water baptism. And, um, you know, the six important truths about water baptism. Uh, over to Deepika. Yeah, Thanks. thank you so much, Pastor Selina, for this very helpful talk. Uh, we'll now get into a time of questions. So if you have any doubts or queries on this particular subject, we will begin with those questions. Uh, so uh, if you have any queries, uh, you can unmute and ask your questions. Uh, Pastor Selina and the other faculty will address your questions. Um, you can also type in the chat if you would prefer to do that. Uh, and uh, so we will get started now. Um, you can um, ask your questions. And uh, Pastor Selina, if you can help us with the students' questions. Yeah, please go ahead. It's a familiar topic, but then there are so many uh, practical doubts and questions which we have uh, regarding the sacrament. So if anyone would like to ask their questions, please go ahead.
one question that um, people have generally asked in the past is whether um, water baptism is essential for salvation. Uh, so uh, Pastor Selena, maybe if you could address that. And then in the meantime, uh, if uh, the students can come up with any other questions that they have on the subject. Um, so we know uh, from scripture that uh, salvation is by grace through faith. Salvation is by grace through faith in uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done on the cross for us. So those who uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, those who repent of their sins and ask uh, for forgiveness and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, uh, you know, they can be uh, water baptized. So, you know, like um, Deepika, you said, uh, you know, is uh, you, you said that, you know, salvation uh, you said uh, sorry what did you say again is it uh, essential uh, to get water baptized to be considered as having salvation i mean is it essential is the question which some people ask um, they believe that um, their salvation depends on getting water baptized only then they are fully saved is the um, thought which some of them have and so they raise a question regarding that Okay, it's not that when you're, uh, you know, that when you're ba water baptized, you're fully saved. You're fully saved because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Okay, and then you repent of your sins and you believe. So salvation is by grace through faith. And uh, when you have accepted the Lord Jesus as Christ as your personal Savior, you uh, then go in and get water baptized. And you're doing that out of obedience uh, to what uh, Jesus has asked us to do. And it is doing the will of the Father. Did that help? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, yes, we do have some other questions as well now. Uh, we have a question from Mwai uh, who asks, where does water sprinkling baptism fit into this truth, this overall truth of water baptism? Where does uh, sprinkling water baptism fit into this? So when we see, uh, 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 thank you for your question. Uh, you know, when we look at scripture, we don't see anywhere, uh, 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 you know, sprinkling uh, water baptism that is mentioned. We see um, in uh, from the, uh, in the New Testament, right up to the Book of Acts, we see that you know, when people were uh, baptized, they were fully immersed. Even when Jesus was baptized, we see that he was immersed in water, and when he came out, you know, the Holy Spirit came upon him like a uh, dove so uh, you know there is no scriptural reference for uh, uh, water sprinkling baptism and uh, you know uh, baptism by its, the word itself means you know uh, to dip to immerse to submerge to overwhelm uh, to cleanse by submer uh, submerging and we know that in some of the mainline churches, they do have a sprinkling baptism, uh, that is child-infant baptism. Um, but, um, you know, we know that baptism is only when people have uh, repented of their sins. They've come to a place where they have, you know, they have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, accepted the gospel, and they've received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. They've come to that full knowledge, and then they can be uh, water baptized. Uh, did that help? Any other well, I, yeah. If you have any uh, follow-up questions on that, or has your question been answered? If you could just post in the chat. Yeah, maybe Moai can um, ask a follow-up question if you have one. Uh, in the meantime, uh, maybe we can move on to the next question. Saubhagya so, is asking uh, whether water baptism um, is essential to take the Holy Communion. Uh, yeah, thank you, Sobhagya, for your question. 
Um, so, uh, you know, without water baptism, yes, can, believers can take Holy Communion. Uh, there are, you know, some places where, um, you know, if people are water baptized, they are persecuted, uh, they go through a lot of uh, uh, difficulties, they're thrown out of home, they're thrown out of their village or their community. And so in, in fear of that, uh, people, you know, wait uh, till the appropriate time or the right time when they can be water baptized. But in the meantime, yes, they can take uh, Holy Communion because like I mentioned, you know, uh, both water baptism and the Lord's table, both of these are po powerful ways where, you know, um, uh, or uh, we, pro where, pro pa sorry, powerful ways where we proclaim what Jesus has accomplished through his death and his resurrection. So why not, why lose out on the benefit of, you know, uh, receiving the blessings that the Holy Spirit can administer to us, you know, when we can uh, uh, take Holy Communion, we can receive the full benefits of what Jesus has uh, done on the cross and, you know, wait for the appropriate time when the person can be water baptized. I hope that helps, Obagya. Yes, yes, so Obagya is um, happy with the answer. Uh, let's move on to the next question then. Uh, we have a question from uh, Shanti uh, who has asked, uh, this is not directly related to the water baptism, but uh, she has asked, when we accept Jesus Christ, are we allowed to participate in the Lord's table? Um, yes, that question has been answered to an extent. Would you like to add anything more, Pastor Selena? No, I think I've already answered that question, Deepika. I think we can move on. Perfect. Yes, sir. Um, Ma'am, uh, Srirajya. Yes. I have a question. See, Lord's table is uh, in somewhere the scriptures says uh, you shouldn't. Uh, you should take it in the worthy manner. There's a scripture which talks about when you are participating in the Lord's table, you should take it in a worthy manner. So I believe a person who's not been baptized uh, cannot take it. Okay, uh, thank you for your question, uh, Sri Raj. So um, uh, here, when Paul is talking about, you know, to uh, taking part in the Lord's table in a worthy manner, it means that, you know, uh, uh, it means that, you know, that we are coming to a place where we are recognizing what Jesus has done for us on the cross for our sins. So the context which Paul is writing to the church at Corinth was they had made the Lord's table as a time for a, a feast where they were just bringing their food and they were eating and they were enjoying it like a feast. And, you know, the uh, uh, those who were uh, rich, they were uh, they had segregated themselves from those who were poor. And so he's saying, you know, you need to partake of it in a worthy manner in the sense that, you know, don't look at it as like a, you know, a celebration in the terms of a feast and a potluck where you come and just enjoy food because you are missing out on uh, what the Holy Spirit wants to administer to us uh, and the significance of what Jesus has done on the cross. And that when we are partaking in the Lord's table, we are basically, um, you know, um, uh, thinking and looking at what Jesus has finished for us, purchased for us, and the blessings that he has received for us on the cross. And we are mindful of that, and we uh, press into that, we receive from that, and that is what it means to partake in a uh, in an acceptable uh, way or a worthy way. Also, you know, uh, we would have committed some sins knowingly and unknowingly, so we can just take take, take some time uh, to, you know, ask God to forgive us of our sins and then take part in the uh, Holy Communion. So that does not mean that, you know, uh, the person is... Um, the person is not water baptized and when they are taking Holy Communion, they're doing it in an unworthy manner. It, nowhere it, it, there's scripture reference uh, to that. Uh, a script, what scripture teaches us is that, you know, uh, who can partake in the water baptism and in the Holy Communion is those who have accepted the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And salvation is not by works. Salvation is by grace, uh, grace 
uh, that uh, that Jesus has given to us, the righteousness that he has imputed upon us, uh, his righteousness that he has imputed upon us, and it is uh, by faith that we receive it and not by any works that we do. I hope that helps, Sri Raj. And Sri Raj, if you have any other follow-up questions, you can post it in the chat. Uh, yeah. Moving very quickly to the next question by Brother uh, Prem Shastri. Uh, he has actually asked two questions. Uh, the first is, uh, when a new believer asks for forgiveness for their sins, uh, Jesus forgives them. So where is the need for water baptism? And uh, he also has another question along the same lines. Uh, he, when a person, uh, a, if without water baptism, can we receive the Holy Spirit God into our hearts? And if so, then why water baptism? So forgiveness of sins and receive, uh, receiving of the Holy Spirit is possible um, even without water baptism. So where is the need for water baptism is the question that he seems to be asking. Yes. Yeah. So uh, yes, there is an uh, uh, you know uh, baptism is not a requisite for forgiveness of sins, but you know once a person believes and accepts and then you know they are baptized in water. But uh, why does a person need water baptism? I have presented that in my. Uh, you know, talk. I have mentioned uh, the importance, uh, the important truths concerning uh, water baptism, and I uh, said how we, you know, um, uh, uh, identify with um, uh, Jesus Christ, and how it is a powerful uh, proclamation of, um, you know, of uh, what Jesus has done for us and how we identify with his, uh, his his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and him being seated at the right hand of God the Father. So that is, uh, uh, you know, a powerful proclamation. And also that, you know, it... Um, uh, it, we are benefited just like we are benefited with, uh, you know, when we partake in the Holy Communion. Uh, everything that Christ has finished for us on the cross, we receive that, uh, you know, as a result of taking um, a water uh, baptism. And also, we said water baptism is we are doing it in out of obedience to what Christ has asked us to do, and it is the will of God. And also, like Jesus said, this is to fulfill all righteousness, which means when we are taking water baptism we are doing what is right in the eyes of god we are uh, you know we are saying yes to the will of god in our lives we are saying yes to the will of god to be accomplished in and through our lives and we are saying yes to the kingdom of god uh, to be manifested in and through our life so all of these are just such prof powerful uh, procl uh, proclamations uh, significance of water baptism that we can uh, receive uh, you know when we are water baptized and the other question is without water baptism uh, so Hol Holy Spirit you mentioned, Deepika? We, we can receive the Holy Spirit even without getting water baptized. So where is the need uh, for water baptism? Yes, we can uh, receive the Holy Spirit, but because when you are born again, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us forever. That is the indwelling, uh, you know, presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But, uh, you know, um, uh, when we are water baptized, the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, releases or, uh, you know, makes available to us the full benefits of the cross, everything that Jesus has purchased for us on the cross. So we can receive that. That's what the Holy Spirit does when we are water baptized. If any of the other faculty wants to add, you can please add. Yes, yes, Pastor Selena. I just wanted to add uh, one thought. Um, so we can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit without being water baptized. But as you shared earlier, uh, we have an instruction from Jesus uh, to be water baptized and we've also seen the obedience of jesus the son of god himself uh, as far as water baptism is concerned so these uh, these things also tell us that water baptism is important and that we must be obedient to what we have been instructed so that's why there is a need thank you thank you pastor nancy uh, we have a question from visitra uh, 
about whether baby baptism is acceptable. Uh, I think this question has been answered because uh, someone had asked earlier about sprinkling water baptism, which is basically uh, what is done for babies, uh, where uh, water is sprinkled upon them. And uh, Pastor Selina had said that uh, there's no biblical basis for it. There's no scriptural backing for that. Uh, so um, as that question has been answered, maybe we can move on to the next question. Um, yeah, Deeksha has asked uh, whether a person can take water baptism twice uh, because the first time they may not have been very mature spiritually and might not even have known uh, the Lord very well. But now that they are growing in the Lord, um, and they want to take water baptism a second time, is that uh, acceptable? Pastor Selena, if you could answer yes. that. The, the uh, answer to your question, Deeksha, it's a good question. Thank you. Uh, the answer is yes, you can take water baptism again. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ajay also has asked the same uh, question. Oh, well, not quite, because he has said if a person has committed a sin after uh, after water baptism, then would it be necessary for them to go back and take water baptism a second time because they went into sin? Um, yeah, thank you for your question, Ajay. So, um, you know, we are all not perfect. I am also not perfect. Uh, you know, I received the Lord Jesus Christ and you water baptized. Uh, you, you know, we do uh, uh, commit sins and God knows that. But what we need to do is we need to be mindful of those sins and repent. But in cases where a person has received the Lord Jesus Christ, they are water baptized and they go away from from the faith you know they have totally gone away from the faith and then you know uh, they have realized that and then they come back and they have uh, you know uh, again uh, received uh, uh, accepted the lord jesus christ as a lord and savior then they can take water baptism again but if you keep on uh, sinning then we'll have to keep on taking water baptism so many times <laughs> so you can just ask uh, god for forgiveness but if you have gone away from the truth you have you know uh, rejected you have uh, backslided and then you come back and then you can take yes what about this and again if you wish to yes thank you pastor serena um if you have a follow-up question then uh, you can definitely ask in the chat otherwise yeah you know we can move on to the next question uh we have a question from shiv kumar uh who has um mentioned a mother in a church who has given up idol worship. She is now a, a regular follower of the Lord Jesus. Uh, but the pastor, but she does not want to take water baptism. Uh, however, her pastor is insisting that she should take water baptism. Otherwise, God will not protect her. Uh, is this so? Uh, is the question Shivakumar is asking. If you could I answer think, that. Um, yeah, it's a good question, Shiv Kumar. Um, so I think what, uh, you know, the lady should do is she should just wait till she's convinced in her heart that she wants to take water baptism. So it's okay, you know, the person takes uh, their time uh, to and wait and to understand what is water baptism. Maybe she doesn't know what is water baptism. She wants to know about it or she's afraid or she's fearful. There can be so many factors that are hindering and stopping her. So I think what the pastor should do is you know educator or teacher uh, about what water baptism is you know and um, bring her to that place where she can understand and you know she can make that uh, decision and uh, also if there are any other things that are hindering her any fear then the pastor can help her but otherwise you know uh, the, the question that will god not protect her no god will protect her you know uh, God is a good and a loving, uh, merciful God. He sends rain both on the wicked and the righteous, and He pro uh, He loves both the wicked and the righteous, and He will uh, protect her. So, water baptism is no way uh, assurance or a certificate that uh, you know we receive our protection from God. Yeah, I hope that helped, Shiv Kumar. Yeah. 
All right, then in that case, uh, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, Ajay is asking, uh, ma'am, I received the Holy Spirit anointing without taking baptism. Uh, was that correct or not? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, you know, uh, there is no set pattern or rule in the in the Bible that you know this is a, a, a you know pattern that we have to follow. This is a procedure that you have to follow. You know, when uh, when Paul goes and uh, uh, sorry Peter goes to Cornelius's home and he's teaching them that you know even before he gives the altar call, they're cut in their hearts. They accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and even he, before he, you know, he never even thinks of praying. Uh, you know, uh, praying for. Uh, for them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because they're Gentiles, but you know, the Holy Spirit baptizes them and then they go and take water baptism. So uh, it's okay. So now, since you are, uh, you know, baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can you can prayerfully consider uh, if you want to be water baptized. Yes. I hope that helped, Ajay. Uh, Deepika, there is one question above a puja that you had missed. Pastor, can an unbeliever, uh, uh, someone else, I think we missed out. The Puja's question was regarding uh, taking um, communion. Yeah, can an unbeliever can an unbeliever take holy yeah. communion? We missed out on that question, Deepika. Oh yes, very sorry, Puja. Yeah. Very sorry for that. Uh, yes, if you could go ahead and address that question. Can Pastor. I ask Pastor Nancy to answer that question, please, Pastor Nancy? Okay, thank you, uh, Pastor Selina. So. Um, uh, no, an unbeliever is is uh, cannot participate in the Holy Communion. Um, it's meant for believers uh, because they are part of the body of Christ. Um, like in First Corinthians ten sixteen, you know, uh, Paul uh, he asks the bread that we break is it not a participation in the body of Christ? So when we are partaking of the communion, we are participating in the body of Christ, and those who are a body of Christ can do it, which only means believers. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, yeah, Rupus has a question. Uh, if someone believes in Jesus and dies without taking baptism, will he go to heaven? Uh, yeah, Rupus, this question uh, was addressed by Pastor Selena earlier. Uh, our salvation uh, is not dependent on uh, water baptism, but our faith in the Lord Jesus. Uh, so I'll just uh, like to add, if it's okay, uh, yes, point please Peter. go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you for your question, Rupus. So uh, we see uh, uh, when when Jesus is hanging on the cross and the thief, you know, uh, you know, believed in him, and Jesus said, "Today you will be with me in paradise." Basically, you know, it was uh, Jesus leading him to salvation. And so we know when Jesus said, "You will be with me in paradise," that means he will go to heaven. So there are times when people on their deathbed or you know just before they're dying, they accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. They don't have any time for baptism. So will they go to heaven? Yes, they'll go to heaven. And you know, I've also explained the other points. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Uh, Abhishek has a question. Um, he has asked, Pastor, what if somebody has aquaphobia, a uh, acute fear of water? And in such a case, if one is not willing to get baptized, uh, what should be done in such a situation? <laughs> That's a good question. In I thought of it, <laughs> uh, I think in that case, you know, uh, God understands; He knows. Um, but you know, they still can take part in the Holy Communion, and they're just still experiencing the full benefits of uh, the cross. Uh, proclamation yeah pastor yes, Nancy. Uh, yes pastor selena uh, i mean i would uh, i would stand to differ i would suggest that uh, we speak to the person and as you shared earlier educate the person and uh, show them the instructions of scripture because uh, if they are a believer then this is something that all believers are called to and so if we can work with them um, hopefully you know they'll be in a position to uh, Take water baptism is what I feel. So yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selena, and thank you, Pastor Nancy, for that. Uh, yes, we not have any other questions at the moment. Uh, if anyone would like to unmute at this point and ask an additional question, you can do that. Uh, we have another one or two minutes. But if there are no questions, then um, we can close with a word of prayer. 
any final questions on the topic of water baptism all right yeah then in that case maybe we can close with a word of prayer uh, yeah let us pray lord we just thank you so much for this uh, mentoring session that we could have thank you oh lord for all the doubts which could be cleared uh, we pray for pastor selina use her more and more oh lord for your kingdom and lord we pray that you would be with all of us even as we go through our classes this day uh, thank you oh lord in jesus name amen thank you so much pastor selina for sharing with us and also answering all of our questions and uh, thanks everyone for attending the session and have a great day thank you